Hello and welcome back to Tales of Lumen. Today I want to give you guys a quick recap of the past couple of days. The past couple of drama-filled days that we've had here. Lots of ups and downs, okay? But right now, I think we're most definitely on an upswing. Our internet is currently working. I didn't want to record this too soon. I wanted to give the internet a couple of days to simmer. See if it actually uh, keeps on keeping on. You know, I don't want to... Release a video, jump in the gun, saying, Hey! Everything's working! Hooray! You know, we're gonna have uploads aplenty and videos for everyone and then just dies the next day. That would be terrible. I don't want to do that. Because I've done that before and, well, then it always ended badly. So, I've given it a couple of days and it's looking good. But I want to start at the very beginning. Right, so, we're gonna go all the way back to last Wednesday. I received an SMS saying, Okay, a technician is coming. He'll be there between 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. And his arrival was already just... Oh, man. So bad. Like, he pulled into our driveway. I don't know if he knew that I knew he was there. But I'm sitting here in the office. Not much going on. There isn't even like a breeze outside. So I could hear the car slow rolling into the driveway. And our house is sort of off the street so it's a little bit that you have to drive to get to our front door he drove there he did not phone me even though I specifically I gave the people that I spoke to at the call center specific instructions the tech has to call me when he comes he must call me I specifically requested that then I also put a little piece of paper at our front door just on the front of the gate with my phone number on saying Telcom technician, please call this number. Then there's also a doorbell. There's also a gate that you can knock on. He did not think to use any of these methods to alert me to his presence. Nothing. Because I went outside. And then he was just turning around, driving off. So I, I immediately opened the gate. I ran out into the field in front of our house. And I like waved my arms at him. And then he saw me. Okay, and then he had to turn around. He could not drive off. So that was the first red flag right there he did not even bother trying to get in contact and then he came in okay he came in and the first thing he said to me so it was an old dude a beard he was complaining he was grouching he was like huffing and huffing first thing he says to me oh my papers say you've got two lines on the premises if there's a fault with the second line the one that i'm not here to work on i am not allowed to touch it so i will not that's the first thing he says to me okay the first thing he says oh man that was really just so frustrating so he comes in here he does a test he says okay this is fortunately for you the right connection i'm not even joking that is what he said because when he said to me i'm not going to work on the other line i said well like they're right next to each other they're right there that's the one that's the other one he said no no if you want someone to work on the other one you need to log a complaint a new fault needs to be opened then, then I will come out and look at it. Whatever, whatever. So he came in here. You know what he did? He looked, he looked, he looked at the cable, he looked at the routers. He leaned over, he bent down with great effort. He pressed the button on the router that turns it off. He waited like a moment, okay? He didn't bring anything in here with him. Usually the technicians bring like a little suitcase, a bag, whatever, their little testing equipment. The only thing he had was this little telephone that told him the number. Okay, he waited. Then I told him before he even turned it back on. I told him, now listen here, it's probably going to go on when you turn it on. And it'll probably look like it's working. But it will go off. Five minutes later. He said, okay, okay, whatever. Turns it on. Not even joking, he says, okay, the connection is working. Can you check it on one of the computers? He did not bring his own laptop or anything in here, so I check it. It's on. Lo and behold, I was right. Then he's like, okay, so your connection is currently working. There is nothing I can do for you. This is not a fault that I can work on. He turns around. He walks out the gate. On his way out. Okay, I, 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 I'm not, like, he didn't give me a chance to even talk to him. On his way out, I say, like, can you, like, maybe check the lines outside, the physical connections, there's a pole out there that the other guy checked, there's a pole in the street that you can look at, you can't just leave it like this because we're still waiting for it to be fixed. It's going to be dead in just a couple of moments. And he says, no, well, 
it's currently working. What am I supposed to do? Those were his exact words. That's a quote. The line is currently working. What must I do? <sighs> you do not understand how much it irritates me when people accept positions, accept jobs like this, and then they don't even want to do them. Oh, okay. So then he says, yes, okay, I'll look. He gets in his car, he drives off. He didn't look, he just drove off. My God. Then, after I told this to my mother, she doesn't take kindly to things like this, she complained. Okay, she sent like a strongly worded message to, and that's not the kind of thing I like to do, but she did it for me and I was very grateful for that to Telcom. And she said, listen here, this is unacceptable. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I don't need, I don't need to relay that message to you. Don't. Then not even two days later, that Friday, we received another SMS. Okay. Another SMS that said, technicians come in. I did not get my hopes up. I did not. But that Friday, at about 11 o'clock, a technician arrived. And this guy, my mother said, she spoke to him on the phone. She said he sounded intelligent. He sounded keen. He sounded like he was going to do things. He came in the gate, he looked me in the eyes, he did not just trudge past me to try and get to our router immediately to reset, he looked me in the eyes, he said, hello, my name is Alan, and I'm hopefully gonna fix everything that's wrong here. And man, did I believe him. Now, this guy was not from our local telecom offices. That was already such a big, big big plus for me because everyone that we've had from around here they failed so this guy came in uh he immediately just put all his he came in with like a bunch of stuff okay like a, a little briefcase a backpack on his back and then the telephone in his hand and he immediately spoke to me he asked me okay so what's been going on i i see here that the fault has been <laughs> and this was the worst the fault has been going on for three and a half months unresolved he said, yes, okay, so because of that, there's got to be something wrong here. He asked me what the previous technicians did. He asked me that. He asked me to show him where the physical lines are. He asked me to explain exactly what the problems were. It was so good. My God. Oh. It was like heaven for me at that moment. This guy was interested. Man. So then, then he says to me, okay, so where we come from, we like to do things right. Because... What I explained to him was that, like, one guy, he fiddled over there, he, he replaced a little piece of wire, he fiddled over here, he replaced a little box. He fiddled over there, he didn't put things back together again, and then he said, okay, this is, this is not acceptable, this is not how work is meant to be done. He was from Stellenbosch, apparently there, they do things differently, they do things right. He said that he and a friend of his were on loan, and they were helping out here till the end of the month, and again, my god, I'm, I'm just so happy that they were. He came in here, okay, and he said... You've got me for a couple of hours. Let's see if we can just do things right. So what he did was, he said, okay, the line starts here. Rip. He pulled it out. He just pulled it out of the wall. That was it. Done. And he started just ripping everything out. He said, okay, we're going to replace it all. We're going to replace every single last piece. He basically reinstalled the entire connection for me. And he was a funny guy because what he did was he pulled, 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 he pulled, pulled, pulled. Uh, there was a big pile of uh, wires on the floor outside there and then he said okay i'm done my job here is finished he picked up his bags and he started walking to the game man what a joker seriously, seriously. for a second there i thought he was serious because his delivery was was on point let me tell you right now his delivery was on point so he was a funny guy he was doing his job this was so so good let me just tell you it was such a relief he spent a good three and a half hours here so he installed the line so neatly all the way up here out through a hole in the door at the top there in the door frame along the wall he hammered the little clips in it's so perfectly installed he went up along the wall there then he had to actually lay not lay but like extend a wire across to the pole outside and at that point he asked me to help him like very friendlyly is that even a word? Asked me to help him uh, by trimming the tree outside on the roof there. Easy for me to get to. It wasn't like a life-threatening task. I took a, a saw and I 
sorted some branches, or quite a lot of branches actually. It's something that we needed to do because he said that uh, just having these branches tapping against the wire constantly was not safe, it could cause future problems. He went up the pole that was like rickety, it was like swaying as he was climbing on it. He risked his life to install our connection. It was amazing, okay? He spent so much time here and then closer to the end of it, and let me tell you, he replaced both connections. So he put, he said that these wires are old, the chances are that it could have been any number of things, corrosion, water damage, this, that, the other, so thus we reinstalling the entire thing. He replaced both connections, both of them, at the same time. He laid the wire together, all the way up, both done. He put nice little access points neatly against the skirting of our wall at the bottom there. So, so good. And then like, I don't know, most of the way, most of the way through this, his, uh, he told me, okay, so I've been here for a long time. I was actually not allowed to spend this long on one fault. Could you please, if possible, report uh, the other line as being faulty as well? And then I'll just go home or, you know, this afternoon to the office or whatever. And I will just resolve that fault for you immediately. So that I actually had reason to be out here this long. Working on two connections instead of the one. I said, sure as hell I can. Of course I'll do that. So I did that for him. He resolved the fault later that afternoon. And... You know, all was well. But when he was up on the pole outside, his friend, who was from Durbanville in Cape Town, he came and he pulled up over there in the street. He shouted at the guy, Do you need some help? I've got a few moments. My lunch has just begun. I can help you. And then I was like, Whoa. This nearly knocked me on my back because this was another telecom employee actually offering his services. And the guy was like, Nah, no, nah, I got this, man. You go enjoy your lunch. This was like, this was like What? Like, I was on another planet, and that's just now just because I've had such terrible interactions with these technicians over the past couple of months. I was just so impressed. So, so impressed. So this guy, he installed everything. Uh, he, I gave him a nice glass of water. I gave him some, you know, refreshments because he was here for a long time. Uh, he activated the connections. I plugged them all in and everything. He waited. He waited to see. We spoke a little bit, he asked me what I do, I asked him, like, you know, what the job's like over there. He said it's, well, a little more demanding than here, it feels like he's on holiday here, which is understandable. Uh, and he said that there's just a lot wrong going on here. We spoke a little bit because he was waiting to see if the connection would drop again. Then, he said that he's not going to resolve the fault yet. He will call me back on Monday and we'll just sort of see if everything's okay. And he did. On Monday, he called me back. And I told him, yes, things are going so well here, it's great, well done. And then when he was leaving here, I actually gave him a bottle of wine. I know that's probably illegal or something, but my parents left one of their own bottles from their own farm here. I told him, thank you, here's a bottle of wine. I, <laughs> funny, I actually told him, you know, if you don't drink red wine, he's like, no, 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 I love red wine. Takes it. <laughs> funny. Well, it was good. It was so good. He fixed the connections. It seems like... They work, and we had some issues with it dropping for like just a few seconds at a time, but it seemed like that was like 100% related to the account being used on the connection because we connected to a different account and it worked fine. So things are going well with the internet right now, and it is all thanks to Alan from Stellenbosch. He just came in here, he whisked away all our problems, he fixed everything, and it was great. I know this is the kind of thing that most of you probably just take for granted, like, you know, a technician comes and he fixes something. Pfft, that happens on a daily basis. No, nope. nope, not here. It doesn't. So I'm just super grateful. I'm super happy that we got this fixed. It's been so, so long. Now I'm hoping things remain on the up and up here. I'm hoping that the connection stays up. I'm hoping that uh, the, the speed stays all right. I'm hoping that I can get videos uploaded. Okay, I'm hoping that things go well. But it does seem currently like... That's the thing. So I didn't want to, I don't know, report false information before I knew it was actually okay. So I waited till after the weekend. And over the weekend anyway, and this is the other thing I wanted to talk about, we went to visit my parents on the farm because they had adopted a new dude, a new little puppy from the uh, local SPCA, the local animal welfare. His name's Caleb and he's just super handsome. So we had to go and visit, of course. Nero wanted to play. He wanted to play and play and play and run and run and run, spend some time with the guy, and he did. He had a great time on the farm, and, you know, I used that time to start a couple of big uploads, and 
make sure everything was okay. Like on the one connection, what I did was I started a couple of game updates that I needed to do. And I downloaded Star Wars Battlefront. And then on the other connection, I just started a bunch of uploads. And it seemed like everything just went well. I came back, everything was still stable. The uploads were like most of their way done. And everything seemed okay. But on the farm, going back to that now, I'm done talking about the internet connection. Okay. On the farm, we got to spend some time with little Caleb. He is a street puppy through and through. Nero, Nero's also a township puppy. Like he, he's got this hunger. This hunger that can never be quenched or sated or whatever you do to hunger. Uh, he is a little scavenger at heart, just like Nero. And that's just something that is going to be forever, but it's so cute to see. He came to my parents, obviously, like super skinny. He was apparently... Uh, dropped off at the SPCA to be put down. He was like, he must be around six months old, I think. He's the most handsome little dude. Intelligent little eyes, cute little snoot, well, cute big snoot, actually, long floppy ears, nice coloration. I'll put some photos up, obviously. And he and Nero just got along famously. Of course, there was a little bit of a grr, grr here and there, like they growled a little bit, they, they clashed a little bit, but that was to be expected. They had a good time. Overall, they had a, a really good time, and it was nice seeing him learn how to dog, and learn how to farm, and learn how to, you know, do the things that Nero and little Sophia on the farm there just know how to do. My parents actually adopted this little guy because their Jack Russell that they had, his name was Bucky's, he recently got bitten by a snake, and he passed on. It wasn't nice, of course, but he died doing... The most honorable thing, protecting his family, his people, from the biggest, fattest cobra ever. He killed the cobra. Okay. And he had before, this little guy, like no matter what my parents did, no matter what they did, this guy went after those snakes with a vengeance and he killed them by the dozen, he took them out. But this one was like as thick as his body. A massive thing and he actually got bitten by it and then he caught it over the head okay so with his jaw he bit over the head of this Cobra like over the head and he bit down crunched down on it and then the tooth of the Cobra got him in the top of the mouth and that was obviously like really bad he killed the Cobra he like swung it around and tore it to pieces it was a, a very dramatic ending uh, but again like this is a good guy. That little dude. And that happened like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think. It's very sad. But, again. Like that little guy. Man. He never gave up. Then they went, took him to the vet, and they gave him all the shots they could give him. Like, they took him immediately. He actually, he made it like most of the way through the night. The vet actually took him home that night to make sure she could do everything she could do. But, yeah. So it's very sad. But the new guy's there now. He will not chase off the snakes. And that was something, again, they could just not do anything about. He will not chase off the snakes. He is probably much like Nero. Scared of things like that. <laughs> you have to stay away from it. But that's farm life, I guess. The new guy, however, like I said, learning how to dog. It was, it was really great to see. He's, he's a real floppy, flappy guy. Like, he's still very young. He's learning how to run properly. He's learning how to... Do all the dog things properly. He eats his food like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and then it's like, you hear that. That's what you hear. Okay. <laughs> and then it's like, just all gone. All gone. Big bites, big bites. Nero does the same. That's, that's just the hunger that will always, always, always be there. When they come from the SPCA, when they are in that paddock that the SPCA has there with all these dogs in, then they gotta, they gotta fight for their food, you know? And they do. Nero does that, to this day. Doesn't matter if no one's here, doesn't matter. He eats that food like a hungry dog. <laughs> My mother's dog, Sophia, the other one, she sort of looks at her bowl and she's like, Okay, what do we have here? Yeah. Okay. She like gives it a bite. She like looks around, she's like, okay, well, and then she repositions herself and she like has another bite. That's what you get from pedigree dogs. <laughs> oh, man. So we had a nice time. We went for like lots of long walks and stuff. Nero, obviously, got a lot of exercise, like a lot. I throw the ball for him a lot. 
and he loves it. He loves it. The little Caleb dude, he, he ran off the ball a couple of times. He doesn't know how to play fetch yet. My mom is going to train him, like, all the training, all of it. She's going to try and do it properly, raise him to be a good man, like Nero. Uh, but for the most part, he sort of just, he jumped along, he flopped along, he, he had a nice time. He just enjoyed being in the presence of these other dogs who are obviously teaching him things. Like, they run around, they sniff things together. It was just super cute to see. Okay, and like I said, he's a handsome dude, he seems very calm, and he has a good nature. I have no idea why the people just dropped him off there. I, I have no idea. I, I'm thinking it was one of these families or houses or whatever that had puppies, gave them away, and this one just didn't find a home, so they dropped him off there, and they hoped that they would give him a home. But I am so grateful that my parents got him, and it's, it's so nice that we, like got him a nice home and stuff. I always just think that these dogs, man, they all deserve it. If I if I could, I would adopt all of them, have like a whole house full of dogs. I could, just, I could just go hug in the dogs all the way from here to the bedroom and all the way back just have a dog to hug every meter. Man, oh man, give them all nice little beds. Oh, it would be so nice. Anyway, so that's at least one puppy that's getting a really nice home. Of course, in my parents, they are the ultimate dog owners. And I think he's going to have a really nice time. So... We went to the farm, we actually took my friend who lives just up the road here, Sean, with, and, you know, we just had a time there. Nothing special, really. We actually went to eat in a restaurant that is just down the road from my parents' farm that was going to close down for good. Had a really nice meal there. Myself and Helene, my battle wife, we shared a steak and a burger. It was incredibly, incredibly good. Had a nice vanilla cheesecake for dessert. And, uh, yeah, we just basically had a really good time. And when we came back, the internet was still up, like I said. And that's absolutely amazing. So, as it stands right now, we have working internet. I have some uploads going. I think that within the next couple of days, you're going to be seeing Wildstar, Starcraft, Hearthstone, uh, Battlefront. More videos like this, hopefully. And, like... Everything else that you've come to expect. I'm, I'm hoping it just sticks around and works. You know, there's, there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of content that I want to put out. The next couple of days might be used as catch-up days. Like, I'll just work on recording the day-to-day -day videos. And then after that, I'll start uh, working on the one-minute guides again. I'll start getting stuff like that up. I think it's going to be good. I honestly think it's going to be really good. And I'm just going to hope for the best going forward. Now, like I said in the Q&A before this... It's, again, something that could just possibly change at any time, but I'll keep you guys updated. You can follow me on Twitter, and you'll get the latest there. But yeah, for now, it's really, really good. And I'm super grateful for the help that Alan from Stellenbosch provided, because again, like, wow. So, so unexpected, right? So unexpected. I'm done. I'm finished. Helene's brother is actually coming to visit us today, which is welcome. Like, it's something that has not happened for many, many months. We haven't seen him for ages. He's actually also a gamer of sorts, a professional Counter-Strike player. Literally the best player in the country. Don't know if he actually still plays the game anymore, but he's going to come here. He's going to hang out with us. We're going to do some stuff. Maybe eat some pizza. That would be really nice. So yeah, in that time, there'll be videos uploading and hopefully I'll record some stuff before he gets here and everything's gonna be good So thank you for everyone that was like saying it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Don't worry. We'll wait around Thank you for waiting around because hopefully things are gonna be much much better going forward now I mean along with all of this We've obviously got the goodish news from the German Embassy and the passport side of things I think things are going well there and it shouldn't be too long now we should be getting even more good news and maybe some passports soon. So, again, like, we are hoping for early next year sometime. Hoping that the move happens. Then I'd like to spend family with a, uh, Christmas with a family here. Have a, a family Christmas. And then maybe move on after that. Try start the new chapter in our lives. We'll see how things go. But, for now, I'm just happy that the internet's back up and running. I am uh, happy that I get to visit a new little puppy that's very like-minded to Nero every now and then on my parents' farm. It's good. It's real good.
So I hope you guys are having amazing weeks as well. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming up later this week on the Blizzard front. Overwatch stuff. I'm going to release a news episode probably sometime today covering that. It's exciting. Exciting times. So check back here soon for my apologize if this is a bit long. I'm going to try and put some photos and stuff in here. I'm going to try and make it a little bit more interesting than just me here talking. I know a lot of people want more than that. So I'll try and provide it. Okay. But again, check back here soon for more. Give it a like, share it, and do all that good stuff. Hope for the best with me. And then hopefully the best will become a thing. Reality. Happy that.